gentle giants and living fossils of the Great Lakes, the Lake Sturgeon. This video takes an in-depth look at the incredible Lake Sturgeon. The footage shown at the end of the video was taken by Greg Lashbrook, a videographer and fellow Lake Sturgeon enthusiast, while scuba diving in the upper St. Clair River near Port Huron, Michigan, or Sarnia, Ontario for those of you in Canada. Spring is sturgeon spawning time, and Greg was able to capture this incredible event on camera. It looks like a lot of lake sturgeon showed up for the party. Greg has spent over 40 years filming these fish. According to his website, he was the first to document the largest free-range spawning population in the entire Great Lakes Basin. He was also the first to document sturgeon in the Big Manistee River in Michigan. The footage we will watch today is all from the Upper St. Clair River site. The sturgeon you'll see in the video that are visiting the St. Clair River are part of the largest free-range population, meaning they are not trapped by any dams, therefore have access to the entire Great Lakes system. The Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry estimates that nearly 30,000 adult lake sturgeon utilize this site for spawning. Since sturgeon only spawn once every three to four years on average, that means that the upper St. Clair River site may get up to 10,000 visitors every spring. The St. Clair River, as well as the rest of the Huron-Erie Corridor, also known as the St. Clair Detroit River System, or SCDRS, is part of ongoing GLFC-supported lake sturgeon projects led by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Alpena Fish and Wildlife Conservation Office and partners including Michigan Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Geological Survey to restore the population of this ancient fish. As we have talked about before, the lake sturgeon are the largest freshwater fish native to the Great Lakes Basin. But let's learn some new information about these fascinating fish. Their scientific name is Acipenser fulvescens, and they are often called living fossils of the Great Lakes. They belong to one of the oldest fish families and have been around for more than 100 million years. Their historic presence may explain some of their unique characteristics, such as the large bony plates, called scutes, that cover their body instead of the more common fish scales, their large sucking mouth, and their elongated snout. Lake sturgeon can live to be 150 years old, making them the oldest living fish in the Great Lakes. With such a long lifespan, they can grow to lengths as great as 8 feet and weigh as much as 300 pounds. Surprisingly, these large fish are not active predators. Rather, they are benthivores that feed on insects and small fish found on the bottom of lakes and streams. Lake sturgeon take many years to reach reproductive maturity. Males mature when they are between 8 and 22 years old, while females mature much later, between the ages of 14 and 33. Only a small proportion of mature adults in the population reproduce in a given year. It is unclear why, but individual lake sturgeon only spawn once every two to seven years. The small number of spawners results in small year classes, Therefore, it takes many spawning seasons to produce enough young to replace the adult sturgeon lost from the population. As a result of their delayed maturation and infrequent spawning, lake sturgeon are very sensitive to pressures that reduce the population, such as fishing and pollution. Historically, lake sturgeon numbers were very abundant in the Great Lakes, so much so that they were considered a nuisance fish for becoming entangled in fishing nets. By the early 1900s, though, many populations were greatly reduced or extirpated throughout their range due to overfishing, dam construction, habitat loss, and pollution. Lake sturgeon are now recognized as a threatened species in the United States and are protected in the Canadian waters of the Great Lakes. In an effort to further protect this vulnerable species, the GLFC and partners created this poster several years ago to increase awareness about poaching. The projects taking place in the St. Clair River area are working to repopulate this species. To do so, lake sturgeon are caught using long fishing lines that are left out overnight. Once a fish is brought into the boat, trained researchers quickly get to work collecting biometric data, such as length and weight, 
as well as genetic samples. Each fish is thoroughly assessed for different issues, such as lamprey wounds. Then they are marked using both external tags and internal radio telemetry tags. In some cases, acoustic tags are surgically implanted so that a fish's movement around the basin can be more closely monitored. Finally, if fish are found to be reproductively mature, eggs and sperm are harvested. Afterwards, the adult sturgeon are re-released in the area they were first caught, and the fertilized eggs are sent to several sturgeon hatcheries around the Great Lakes region. In only three short months, the young lake sturgeon are ready for release in certain streams around the Great Lakes to help continue the restoration of this important Great Lakes species. Wait, did you see that? Let's get one more glimpse. Who needs cat videos when you can look at a baby sturgeon all day long? Port Huron, Michigan and Sarnia, Ontario sit right at the juncture of Lake Huron and the St. Clair River. On the Port Huron side, there is a special festival dedicated to these gentle giants each year called the Blue Water Sturgeon Festival. The GLFC is fortunate to be a part of this event that is hosted by the Friends of the St. Clair River, as well as a related event for local St. Clair County 5th grade students that teaches them all about the lake sturgeon living right in their own backyard and comes complete with an end of the school year boat ride out into Lake Huron to see a lake sturgeon up close. And now for your viewing pleasure, excerpts from Spawned by a Sturgeon by Greg Lashbrook. What's so special about diving with the sturgeon? They are just so majestic. And I'm down there with this big camera, holding on for dear life, just, just so I won't get blown downstream. And they're just there, their tails wag a little bit. And it's also the biggest fish that we see in the Great Lakes. And that in itself is amazing to just be next to a six foot sturgeon. And you just know that there's thousands of them right here, right here under the Blue Water Bridge. Freighters are going overhead as we're out there. Currents switch direction, comes from the east, comes from the west. Whirlpools come through and grab you, lift you, spin you around. I've seen sturgeon shoot up head first and tail first, caught in uh, some of these uh, whirlpools and at times uh, can be kind of treacherous almost. But it, it's always exciting and the sturgeon just seem to love it. When you're swimming with sturgeon, they treat you just like you're one of them. They'll come right over and they'll cuddle up next to you. And you... I, I've even been spawned underwater. It's probably because my wetsuit smells like a sturgeon, I imagine. Some of the challenges of filming the sturgeon on site, the diver basically has to hold on for dear life. Pretty much the sturgeon are always moving, so it's it's a challenge to keep up with them when they think it's nothing to to go into the current up 10, 20 feet where, where I'm breathing like crazy, I got one hand free at best. I also consider the sturgeon, it's such a privilege to dive with them because Mankind has been so cruel to them over the century that uh, it's it's just amazing they're ev they've even lasted and they're still here. So to me, it's just uh, a thrill of a lifetime to be down there with them.